Good morning, good morning, Salamat Siang to all my Indonesian friends. Yes, it's one minute after eight o'clock, it's one minute after one o'clock in Indonesia. Good morning, good morning to everyone. I did not tag anyone because I struggled, he did not want to tag. But yes, we're online and uh, I'm really excited about today's message. I, I think we live in a time where we need, really need to know who we are in Christ Jesus. We really need to know our identity. Pastor Saki, goeiemorgen. Good morning, good morning, pa, Pastor Tolly. Now I say Pastor Saki. Pastor Tolly, goeiemorgen. Good morning in Lichtenberg. Good morning, my darling wife. Yes, the time is near. On Sunday, we will leave back for Indonesia. And I want to thank you for all your prayers and for the time we've spent in South Africa. Pastor uh, Marius, goeiemorgen. Good morning, Dr. Marius. Pastor Fricky, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Thank you also for the fellowship we had on Monday with you and Pastor Bertha. A privilege. Lydia, goeiemorgen. Good morning. There in Uppington. Uh, yes, hallelujah. Um, I'm so excited today. We will play a bit of golf. It's been 10 years also since last I played some golf. But yeah, I really enjoyed that. But yeah, um, I just want to say to everyone, good morning, good morning. And if yeah, if you're from Indonesia, salamat siang. Um, I will just give a minute maybe still for people to come on and then we will start this morning the message. Uh, yeah, and that the, like I've said, it's a message to encourage you. Um, I think one of the things is my message this morning. Are you fellowshipping with God or your problem? And how many people fellowship with their problems? morning, Natasha. Good morning. Good morning, Natasha. Hallelujah. 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 Let's pray and we start this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new brand day. For this day, Lord, that you have given unto us another day that we can make a difference. We can build your kingdom. We can be sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit being obedient and maybe just share the love of Christ, maybe just encourage somebody, maybe just pray for someone, maybe just take a step of faith and release and decree over your own life and somebody else's life, life. We live in a time of God where we so easy can speak about negative things, whereas we will receive what we speak. And, and the main thing is, Father, it's we will live by what we speak and and therefore, Lord, let us speak life and the word of God and let us just say it is written and by faith believe that and see the changes coming. Father, we honor you right now. We honor you right now. I pray and release your blessing over everyone. May the ones who hear this message be encouraged, me being uplifted. May the chains that bound them just fall off and may you open prison doors. Whatever keep them inside, may it just be unlocked and opened in Jesus' name. May we, May an earthquake just shatter every, every shackle and every prison so that people can be set free. Therefore, this morning, I honor you and I worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Sophia, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Pastor Bertha, goeiemorgen. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. So this morning, my message is, are you fellowshipping with God or your problem? And the thing is, I'm talking about worry. Worry, worry. I believe this. Maybe not a day goes by that people are not, do not worry about something in their lives. And uh, and uh, how many times that worry can become the things that's prominent in your life. The thing that you worry about becomes the thing you set your mind upon. And and if you set your mind upon those on that thing that you worry about, you are consumed by your own reasoning. How to overcome or how to get out of this or, or just to get through whatever storm. But the thing you worry about. And then many times you will, you will go to bed and that same thought pattern will just be there. Pastor George, goeiemorgen. I think in honor by Pastor George. Goeiemorgen, Pastor George. And uh, um, so I want to show you something. What actually happened when you worry. And, uh, and uh, it's so important to understand you have a choice. I want to tell you this morning, you have a choice to trust God, lean upon God, 
or to trust yourself and lean upon yourself. And uh, I just want to see, want to show you something that if you allow worry, you move out of the grace of God and you move into work. So let me show you in the scripture this morning what I'm saying. In Romans chapter 11 verse 6, now I will read for you two translations. The one is the Passion and the one in King James. And then I want to just talk a bit about the scripture, what it says. Now, if you first read the scripture, it doesn't make sense. You must read and read to have a revelation what's really, what is really written here. Now, let's read in the Passion Translation. It says, and since it is by God's grace, so he it said it's by God's grace. Then he says, it can't be a matter of their good works. So, it's by the grace of God and not by your good works. Now, I want to go on. He says, otherwise, it wouldn't be a gift of grace, but earned by human effort. So, there's a grace of God and there's a human effort. So, if you choose the human effort, and, and I will show you now something. If you choose the human effort, it is not by the grace of God. What does the word grace mean? It's unmerited favor. I mean, we being saved by the death of Jesus Christ open a way for us, not of what we've done or who we are. He paid the price for our sins. So once we accept Him, it's by His blood that we enter. Amen. It's by His death for us that we, as we accept Jesus, unmerited favor. But then there's the empowering uh, uh, power. You know, the, it's like the, the resurrection power or uh, unlimited power. That's also part of grace. So it's understand to know what is grace. It says, and since it is by God's grace, it says actually it's by the power, the resurrection power of God, by the resurrection power that, that also was within Jesus Christ. But if you go to the good works in that condition, it's not, it's not by the gift of grace anymore, but human effort. Let's read now in the King James Version. And if by grace, then is it no more of works? So if you allow grace, it's not what you can do. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then there's no more grace. So what it says, if it's works, you move away from grace. Works is the opposite of grace. Then it's by your works. It's by your understanding. It's by your reasoning. It's by what you do to overcome the thing you worry about. I want to go on. So it says here, but if it be of works, then is it no more grace? Otherwise, work is no more work. So worry is a work. If you worry, it's a, a flesh or let's say a human work thing that you do and that's the opposite of grace so what is worry to torment oneself with disturbing thoughts i want you to listen this morning you pray for a breakthrough you pray and seeking god you know and and that his grace will come upon you his grace that unlimited favor that enabling power to break through to make you to walk on the water that that you know that power that makes you to receive, you know, the promise of God by your faith to manifest. But worry makes you to move from this position who you are in Christ by His grace. You move away from that unlimited power or you move away and it becomes works. Because worry, it says here, you torment yourself with disturbing thoughts. What, what does it mean? You Try to resolve your problem. That's why it's called works. So it's when you're laying or when you worry about something, it's what your mind, reason, what can I do to get out of this? I want you to see this. So your worrying is an instrument the devil uses of the flesh to make it to move out of the grace of God into your own hands. You place yourself now to, to overcome the same thing. Listen, if the doctors say you're sick and you worry, you've 
immediately closed the spirit door. I can go actually a bit further. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17, it speaks about this war against the flesh and the spirit. So it said it's this constant war. Now, in any given time in your life, no, both doors cannot be open, either the one or the other. So if like now you have a storm and you worry, you close the spirit door and you open the door of the flesh, the door of works. You move out of grace and now you try to overcome the situation that you are facing. But now out of your flesh door that's open will influence your mind to make decisions out of how you reason and perceive this situation. But now God says, no, no, no. There's a constant war. So if you choose to have faith and you say and you start speaking the word of God and you put your trust in God, what happens? You open the spirit door. You close the flesh door. So what's the flesh door? That's worry, anxiety. I want you to see that. So if you open the spirit door, you know, you overcome whatever the mindset of the human nature. You close the work of the flesh and you say, I put my trust in God. And then you activate grace, his unmerited favor to overcome the situation that you are facing. I want you to see this. So when you torment yourself with disturbing thoughts, the only thing you are doing, you move from spirit to flesh. And the more you harbor about these thoughts, Adriana, Guiamora, good morning. So the more you have these worry thoughts that's disturbing you, you torment yourself. And even if you pray, you cannot receive grace because you've opened the door of the flesh by your own works. I want you to see this. So then you pray, God, I need an answer. But you worry. It's like God cannot over, override your choice in your mind. You need to become quiet in your mind. You need to start worship God that your mind can come and be focused on the things that's above. And the more you start coming into the, into the rest of God, you start closing the word, you know, the, the, the works of the flesh of the mind of the flesh. And the more you do that, you open the, the door of the spirit. Actually, if, if I say that you open a dimension of God's grace in your life and out of that, the words start and the promises of God start to happen. So let's take, for example, somebody is sick and they have heard the doctor says, listen, you know, this is really serious. So what do you do? What does the person do? They start to worry. They start to worry. They open the, the door of the flesh. Now somebody come to pray but they themselves say, I believe, but yet their mind is consumed, tormented by the thoughts of what the doctor said. And they make the problem a higher thing than the grace of God, than the signs and wonders and the miracles of God. I want you to see that. So what is worry also being defined? To feel uneasy, anxious and troubled. Listen, if you have the symptoms, the only thing it actually says that you are now in the flesh. You are busy with works. If you reason about the things that you are facing that you need to overcome. Listen, you actually say you close the, 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 the door of the spirit. You close the grace of God to work within you. Janet, uh, good morning, good morning. I want you to see this. So that's why worry makes you to work through the flesh. Even you speak the word of God, even you expect God to do something. But you need to close the door of the flesh, put your trust in God, lean upon God and say, God, I surrender. And I start declaring the word of God. And the more you praise God, the more you exalt God. What happened? The more you move within the spirit, in the supernatural. Now the grace can manifest because it's by faith that you choose. To put your trust in God. It's by faith that you say to the devil, get behind me, Satan. That you talk to sickness and said, I will not listen to my pains, what doctor says. I choose to exalt God, even if I have to die, even if I have to do whatever. Whatever the storm is, 
I put my trust in God. And that's the faith that makes you to open that door of grace. Amen. So it says here, to torment with annoyances, cares and anxieties. That's all the definition of worry. Sorry. It says also here, to seize by the throat, marno goeie with the teeth and shake. It's like something have you on the throat and shake you. Listen, I don't, I believe this every day that we are challenged within ourselves by things that can make you to worry. But God is saying this morning to you, listen, if you worry, it's a sign that you are flesh door is open. You do not have the faith because if you had the faith, you would not worry. You would trust God because God says, whatever I bring over your life, it will not be impossible for you to handle. And if it is, I will give you an open door. I want you to see that. So why do we go through these things? So that God, just like Jesus said through his crucifixion, we will go through stuff. But many of the stuff is to show, you know, that God is who he says he is. More of my ma. So I'm asking you this morning. You see, when we start to worry, we start to fellowship with our problem because we are consumed out of the torment what our problems bring to us. We are tormented by these thoughts. But what we do not realize, we open the door of the flesh, human reasoning. And what happens? God cannot just jump in and bring a breakthrough. You need to close this door and you, open to, to, you need to open the door of the spirit. You need to put God as the as king of glory in your life in that situation. You need to, to, to put what you believe in Christ Jesus in that situation. Amen. So let's look at Hebrew chapter 12 verse 2. Now it gives us an indication. We look away from the natural realm and we fast our gaze unto Jesus who birthed faith within us. And who leads us forward into faith's perfection. Hallelujah. I want you to see this. He says, what does God say this morning? If you want to overcome whatever thing you face, you have a choice. You can put your faith in God. You can fasten your gaze on Jesus that birthed faith in your life. And it opens the door of, of the spirit. And grace can manifest in your life. Or... You can gaze upon your problem and trying to find an understanding. Why is this happening to me? You know, why me and how will I overcome? Whereas God says, listen, come into my rest. Put your gaze upon me. I will, you know, there's so many scriptures. I will lead you through this. I will make you to overcome. Why? Because it's the manifestation of the promises of God in your life. So we need to know, we need to focus. So our heart needs to be focused on God and we receive the joy of knowing that God is who He says He is. Amen. So we need to look away from the problem to Jesus. So what does it mean? When the problem arises, where do you put your gaze? Because now you are challenged do I believe the word of God truly? Can I follow God in this fire furnace? Can I follow God in the lion's den? Can I put my trust in God and know, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, if I perish, you know, it's like God will perish. Not that God can perish, but I want you to understand because we are in Christ Jesus. I want you to see that. I want you to understand that. So just for an example... What happens, you know, if you start to worry? What happens if you start experiencing things? So in Numbers, Ida, Salamat Siang. Let's see what happens in Numbers chapter 20, 21 verse 4. So from Mount Hor, they set out, by the way, to the Red God's people, the Israelites, to go around the land of Edom. And the people become impatient on their way. So one of the things is, listen, I want you to understand this. Worry opens the door of the flesh, the natural, the natural man, the, the old man. But what happened? The more you worry, the more you become impatient. 
So you invite impatience in your life because yet you pray to God, yet you expect a miracle. But the problem is your worry actually shows you do not have faith in what you believe. And as long, and as long as you gaze upon your problem, your flesh door is open. So by the moment you say, I believe who I am in Christ Jesus, I am more the conqueror, I am the head and not the tail. And God, you said I am an overcomer. I do not focus on my problem. I focus on God out of my belief system. So what happened? Now my waiting is not one of impatience, but my waiting is an expectation because I know that God is busy doing something. Maybe not right now, but I've placed my faith also in God, but I've also placed my mind and my reasoning submissive under what I believe towards what I gaze, and that is God, who God is. So I, I shut down and I tell my mind to shut up. Why? Why do I need to tell my mind to shut up? Because if you allow that you start to worry and you open the door of the flesh, you're becoming impatient. Now you start doing things that you think God wants you to do and you want to be victorious over your problem. And most of the time you will fail because it is by your works that you think you can manifest the grace of God. But in actual fact, you manifest only the human nature that is limited towards the supernatural. But if you put your trust in God and you speak what you live, what you speak about the word of God and say, God, I put my trust in you. I will not lean. I tell my mind to shut up. What happens? You open the spirit door and your waiting becomes one of worship, one of excitement. Your waiting becomes, God, I cannot, I cannot wait to have a testimony. So what happens if you, if you open the door of the flesh, your waiting becomes impatient. I want you to see. So listen to what it says. And the people spoke against God. So the moment you are in the flesh, by your own reasoning, that what it brings you to, you become impatient. And what happened? You start to speak uh, against God. You start to say, but I cannot, God cannot give me a breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah, Ida. Amen. Hallelujah. We praise God that He helped you. Thank you, Lord, for her healing. Amen. So listen to what it says. So what happened? And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness where there's no food, no water, and we loathe with the worthless food? You know, what is the things that they actually thought, you know, they need? It is actually earthly stuff. We don't have food. We don't have water. How come? How will I survive? How will I pay my rent? How will I overcome this? You see, it's by the grace of God that the power of God is being released. That resurrection power that will bring you out in complete victory. But if you allow, you know, the works of the, the, the flesh, that worry, anxiety, you become impatient. And now you do not actually move out of the desert. Let's see what happened. So what happened? How does God feel if you say, I believe in Jesus, and you believe the promises, and you say and you sing that I believe the word of God, but yet you worry, because worry is once again, it's a work of the flesh. Out of that, you will become impatient. Now, what, how does God handle? And, and like I've said, what happened to God's people? They become impatient. They could not wait on God. They didn't come to God and say, God, we have this need. They become impatient. And what happened? And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. Many people will not have the victory if they're still in the flesh. I want you to see worry is a big thing the enemy uses to make you to close the, the spirit, you know, the spiritual realm, to close you that you. I mean, what it makes you to, to gaze upon your problem and not on God. What it makes you to belittle God and your faith and makes you to be moving in the flesh and make you to be impatient in the natural. 
Amen. Now, just for interesting, uh, Isaiah 40 speaks about those who wait upon, upon the Lord will be renewed in their strength. If, you, if your waiting is based on, on the flesh through worry and anxiety, you will become impatient. But if, you, if the same scenario, you put your trust in God and you're waiting, God says, I will renew you because of your waiting, because you've put my, your trust in me and I will revive you while you're still waiting. Even your breakthrough is not there. Your healing not there. I will revive you. But you will see the hand of God move. I want you to see that this morning. So what happened? So the people come to Moses and said, We have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpent from us. So Moses prayed for the people. You see, we need to repent about worry. We need to repent about the anxiety. Because we are being tormented every day. Because why? We moved away from the grace of God. We moved away from unmerited favor. Now you find yourself in a desert and you cannot understand. Pastor, then you call the pastor and say, Pastor, pray for me. Uh, pastor Desmond, good morning. Pastor, pray for me. But you're still in the flesh. You still worry. You still have the door of the flesh open. You still try to overcome your own things you worry about. And we say, God, I give it to you. But my, my thing is, is your mind saved? Because if your mind is saved, it means you know and understand that by yourself you cannot bring, bring victory to your situation. But if you submit it under God, by the faith you decree... And the, the, the faith you have in God, it means you do not look at your, the size of your problem. You look at God and you put your trust in God. Amen. So what happened? And the Lord said to Moses, make a fairy serpent and set it on a pole and everyone is bitten. When he sees it shall live. So what does it mean? We have, when we are discouraged by trials and complaining, we open the door for the devil. So what is the deliverance? By looking to the serpent on the pole, they would have been healed. So what, what, what now? In your situation, you need to repent and say, God, forgive me. I've opened the door of the flesh in my life. I've choose to worry. Now I'm being tormented. I cannot see my breakthrough. God, forgive me for thinking that I can overcome my situation. But God, now I choose to move my focus to the cross. Seeing the victory, seeing the resurrection of Jesus Christ, receiving his resurrection power and let go and rebuke the devil that put in your mind the worry that said, because what does the devil say? God will not come through for you. And then we worry. Pastor, but I've prayed a lot. Well, pray more. Pray more. See God more. Because it's your trust. It's not by works. It's by relationship, knowing that you are a son and a daughter of the Most High. It's by that relationship that you choose, even the thing look impossible, that you gaze upon God, upon Jesus, and knowing we have the victory. Why do I allow myself to be tormented? And so many Christians in the body of Christ live a life of tormentation. They've been tormented. By their mind. And yet they quote the scripture. Yet they stay in the wilderness. Yeah, what was the thing? They had to look up. Listen, until you do not look up. And you put your gaze upon Jesus Christ. Your faith cannot be activated. It's a choice. If the one that was bitten did not look up. He would have died. If you do not make a stand. And repent of the works of the flesh. And look upon. And put your gaze upon Jesus. Amen. What you also need to understand, worry causes you to grow cold in love. What happened? Worry makes you that you are started to be feeling distant from God. It's like you struggle to feel, you know, the, uh, the love of God. Why? Let's look again. So what happens? Worry makes you to open the door of the flesh. That impatience is human nature. And that creates that sometimes you will speak always what your mind is filled with negative things. And then Matthew 24, 12 says, 
And because of lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. So what happened? You start losing your faith. Because you've trusted God, but you make worry the God in His place with the things you face. So the more you worry, the more you become lawless. The more you backslide. The more you, you put you know, the blame on God for not giving you a breakthrough. But the problem is you've never opened the spirit door that the grace of God can come in and bring victory in whatever you are facing. Whatever you face. Amen. So love grows cold because of your problems. You cannot solve your own problems, but you can solve maybe someone else. It says we should be completely filled with God. Ephesians 3.19 And to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So what happened when we reason? We have this endless revolving of the mind around and around the problem of our situation. Searching for knowledge and understanding, detailed planning and plotting in excess. You know how we will get through this. I want to conclude with the scripture. What does God say this morning? You see, reason causes confusion and prevents discernment. But what does God say this morning? Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 7. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. So once again, if you rely on your own insight, you will worry. And worry will make you to open the door of the flesh. You know, your own human reasoning. But it will torment you. It will grab you by the throat and shake you. And then you will know, where's God? But if you put, it says, lean on and trust and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And no, do not rely on your own insight and understanding. He says, in all your ways, know, recognize and acknowledge Him. And He will direct and make straight and plan your path. So, the, the path that you are on, who is the one that will give you the breakthrough? You? Your reasoning? You're seeking to, of knowledge how to overcome? No, it's only God that can make way in that desert, can make way in that path you're facing. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord and turn entirely away from evil. So reasoning makes us to have confusion. Amen. So I just want to say this morning to you, you see, reasoning is you trying to, to come up with an answer, how to overcome. But the thing is, you're in the flesh. You are busy with works, coming back to our scripture, coming back to our scripture. That say, and since it is by God's grace, it can't be a matter of good works. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a gift of grace. So if you try to overcome your problem, you're actually only moving in the flesh, in the reasoning of your mind. But the outcome and the things you will start to see, you will become impatient. You will start backsliding. You will be becoming not just impatient, but you become more lawless. You don't care what you say and how you handle it. But if you choose to say, I rebuke the devil. Worry, I will not allow you. Doesn't matter what I face. I choose to put my gaze upon God. Why? What is the gaze? You put... And you see that the cross is empty. You see that Jesus has arose. You know that he has given you the authority. Amen. So now move in that authority. And wait. That waiting will be full. You know by faith. And out of that God will strengthen you. So I just want to tell you. Don't waste your time. With what and anxiety. Don't be grabbed by the throat by your situation. Rebuke the devil. Start speaking life over your situation. Over yourself. Rebuke your mind. I said, listen. Come in line with the word of God. Come in line with the purpose of God. Open the door of the spirit. So that the supernatural God wants to fight your fight. But if you're in the flesh, he cannot. You do not prohibit. You, you do not allow him. I, let me quickly go to Galatians chapter 5. I didn't put it here. I just quoted it now. But I just want to finish with Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 and 17. I want to read it to you. But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh, human nature without God. 
You will not come to the place to open the door of the flesh. You will stay. Then he said, for the desires of the flesh are opposed to the Holy Spirit and the desires of the Spirit are opposed of the flesh. It says the one is open and the one not. It's a opposite. You cannot walk in both. For these are antagonistic to each other, continuous withstanding and conflict with each other, so that you are not free but are prevented from doing what you desire to do. Amen. So, what does I say? Get rid of worry. You see, because worry will make you to eat from the fruit of the good of evil, the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge. You think by gaining more knowledge you will have to, you can overcome whatever you are facing. But it's not by knowledge, it's by the tree of life. And you have to open the spirit door and rely on the Holy Spirit and put your whole trust upon Him, lean upon Him, and He give you the promise this morning. He will... He will bring you into victory. Amen. I would like to pray for you this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for a revelation. I thank you, Lord, that we can know that we can turn and put our gaze upon you. Forgive us our sins. And I pray this morning for people that are grabbed by the throat and being shaken by this situation, that the minds are filled with worry and anxiety and they're being tormented. Lord, I rebuke the devil. In Jesus' name. I rebuke that mindset of the flesh, Lord. I rebuke the lies. But Lord, I pray just as that we should look at the cross. Change our view. Change and look upon Jesus. Seeing our victory. Seeing the price that's been paid. And as we gaze upon Him, we, we will receive the grace of God. His unmerited favor. Because He promises that. And therefore, Lord, I release them this morning. I break this chain of worry and anxiety in their minds. And I release, Lord, that you will touch their hearts and that they will say, I decree that I choose to put my faith in Jesus Christ. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you will break every shackle, every open every prison door, that they will step out and that you will be glorified. We honor you this morning in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for working in everyone's life and be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for watching. May you have an amazing day. May God just touch you this morning. Trust God. Close the door for the worry and anxiety and you will see your breakthrough is there. Your healing is there. Whatever needed is there. Then the grace of God can make it happen and you will be healed. Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus loves you. Share this with someone. I will put it on YouTube. Also, I will share it on Facebook again. again. But just know, you're special for God. He don't want you to be tormented. He wants to give life. Shake it off. Shake off that serpent. Change your view and see the glory of God just come upon your life. Jesus loves you. Amen.